Hey everyone, in this video, we can look at how to perform pressure load analysis on a tank. So I have a tank with me here and this tank is supported by two lug supports and these two lug supports have two holes which we are going to arrest in space for our analysis. When we look at the cross section of this tank, it is a 20 millimeter thick tank and has a height of 2000 millimeter. So before we get into our pressure load analysis, let's look at two different ways of performing this pressure load analysis. So the first method is the one we see to the left. So the left one is called uniform pressure load where you select the internal surfaces of the tank and apply a uniform pressure. Say for example, when you have filled LPG or any other pressurized gas inside this tank or a pressure vessel, it is going to impart a constant pressure across all surfaces in an ideal condition. The second case would be hydrostatic pressure load. So an hydrostatic pressure load is a factor of the height or the difference between the top and the bottom portion of the tank. So when you look at the right image, the pressure is constantly increasing from top to bottom. So it is nearing to zero at the top and at the bottom it is maximum because this pressure load is a function of the coordinates. In this picture, we can see the height of the tank is H. So y equal to zero at the top of the vessel so that zero multiplied by any pressure function equal to zero so the top hydrostatic pressure is zero and y equal to h or maximum at the bottom so we get the maximum amount of pressure that is why the arrows are lengthier so now we can go to simulate again and then perform this analysis so we are in simulate right now in order to pick the internal surfaces, we have created this cross-sectional view and we will be continuing to view this model in cross-sectional view throughout. So I go to applications and simulate. Now, first we can uh, look at the constraints we can do. I'm going to pick the displacement constraint and arrest these two mounting holes in all degrees of freedom. Since these are 3D bodies, we don't have to arrest their rotation because rotation is captured using translation for 3D bodies. I'm going to click OK. First, we can try the uniform pressure load. For that, I'm going to go to loads tab, select pressure. So it is asking me to select individual surfaces. Holding control, I'm selecting these individual surfaces. So the other side will automatically be picked and we don't have to worry about picking the other half. When I hit review, it is asking me for a magnitude. Let's say we have a magnitude of one in preview. So Creo has picked up the other side as well so that we get pressure preview on both the sides. So this is our uniform pressure load. We can click OK. Now to run our analysis, what we must do is we must go to Analysis tab, file, going to select new static, I'm going to call this uniform pressure load, UPL. And my constraints and load set have been selected. So for simplicity, we'll pick the convergence method as single pass adaptive. Click OK. And hit the green flag to run the analysis. So we're going to ignore the warnings. My analysis is running now. Now the run is complete. Now we can look at the results of this. So I will click on view results. First we look at the displacement. Deformed 5% of the model size. Show element edges animate with 12 frames per second. So this is how the displacement plot looks. So if you look at the model, except where there is this lux support which act as a stiffening zone, there is symmetric motion of the body. Say for example, the pressure vessel is uh, being stretched at top and bottom in an even fashion, also at the right lateral portions as well. So this is how a uniform pressure load would look like in displacement plot. When we want to look at the stresses, we can double click on the screen anywhere and stop the animation. Click on copy, go to quantities, select stress. We are going to look at one Mises and the unit is MPA, megapascal. I don't want this deform. Show element edges. We can animate it. Okay, so let's select deform to look at the animation. 
So this is how your pressure distribution actually looks like. In case if you want to probe your stresses anywhere in the model, you can stop the animation, go to format, edit, and you can have zero to say 40 MPA on the model. And when you go to home tab, click on dynamic query. I'll switch off this query location, click on anywhere on the model, it will give us results. Say for example, the first point is 47 MPA, the second one is 52 MPA. These are in scientific representations, like it has one decimal point followed by you know, E power one. We can look at the area where this is welded. This is how we can look at the stresses. Now let's go back to the simulate environment again and try the hydrostatic pressure load case. Going to close out of this window, I don't want to save it. You go to loads and constraints drop down and for a second I'll hide the first load set. Before we start to define our hydrostatic pressure load, we have to create a coordinate system that represents the top portion of this tank. For that, I'm exiting out of Creo Simulate, and what we are going to do is we have to click on top plane and then create new plane again. So as I previously mentioned, the height of this vessel is 2000 millimeters. So my top portion from the mid section will be 1000 millimeters. Since my tank is 20 mm thick, so I'm going to create a plane that is 980 millimeters from the mid section of the tank. So going to click OK. So with these planes selected, I mean the, the plane which we just created, the right and the front plane, we are going to create a new coordinate system. So this coordinate system will be in such a way that the orientation of X should point towards the right plane and the orientation of Y should point towards my plane that we just created. Going to click OK. So if you look at the coordinate system, my Y is pointing towards the upper side. Z direction is uh, coming out of plane and X is towards the right. So we are all set to create our hydrostatic pressure load. Now let's go back to applications. Simulate. Picking the pressure load, selecting the surfaces once again. The magnitude is 1. This time we are going to go to advanced drop down. Instead of uniform, we will pick function of coordinates. So this f of x is the defining function. So we will create a new function. I will call it hyd underscore pressure, which means hydrostatic pressure. So instead of world coordinate system, we will select the one which we created right now. It's going to be this coordinate system. As we discussed earlier, since our hydrostatic pressure depends on the height of the vessel, first we are going to include our height, then multiply it by density of our fluid. We can assume that we are going to use water, so it is going to be 1000 kilogram per meter cube. Since all other units are in m mm, that is millimeter, we can put e power minus 6 to just convert that into uh, millimeter system like that is uh, kilogram per millimeter cube instead of kilogram per meter cube and I am going to multiply that by 9810. 9810 is nothing but gravity 9.81 meter per second square since 1 meter is equal to 1000 millimeter we are going to include 9810 instead of 9.81. So the final thing we must do is add a negative sign so that the pressure is acting outward of the vessel and not towards the inside. So we can click OK. So it is telling us you defined a function that is not dimensionless. So anyway, do not show again. Click OK. OK. Now you can hit preview just to see how the pressure is distributed. In the earlier case, we saw that the pressure was evenly distributed across all the surfaces. Let me show it again. So if we look at the left image, the pressure is distributed evenly across all the surfaces and it forms a straight line at the sides. But when we look at this, model here at the top the pressure is nearing zero and at the bottom it is a maximum so my preview looks good so i'll go to front view 
just to show how it looks. This is how it looks and I'll click OK. This time we'll go to analysis and studies again. I'm going to click on new static analysis. I'm going to call HYD underscore pressure. My constraint set is selected and my load set is selected. I'm going to use single pass adapter. I'm going to click OK. Close out of this. Let me check if I have the other load suppressed. Since we have two loads within the same load set, we have to keep the previous uniform pressure load suppressed. So the solver does not take into account. I'm going to go to analysis and studies again. Edit definition, confirm that the constraint and load set are selected. Convergence method is single pass adaptive. Click OK. Hit the green flag to run. We'll ignore the warnings for now. So my run is complete right now. I'll close out of this, go to view results. This time we look at the displacement. Deform 5%, show element edges and 12 frames per second. So this is how hydraulic, I'm sorry, hydrostatic pressure looks like. So when we compare the same with the uniform pressure load, you have to go to copy and choose some other result, uniform pressure load, click OK. When we look at these two side by side, we can see a striking difference because the one on the left, which is hydrostatic pressure load is due to gravity and it's trying to pull the tank towards the downward direction. That is why we can see some twist in the supports. But towards the right, what we have is uniform pressure load. So the tank is not trying to, you know, pull towards any particular direction but uniformly across every direction except where there is support where there is unusual stiffness. It's not unusual but there is uh, obviously going to be more stiffness in this area because we have more material and support here but when we look at other areas you go for right side view we can see that the tank is being deformed and evenly across all the areas top and bottom are symmetric right and left are symmetric but compared to the hydrostatic pressure load on the left which is kind of an asymmetric load when it comes to, you know, entire surface of the, considering entire internal surfaces of the tank, it is kind of asymmetric because the more you go towards the bottom, the pressure is increasing. So as we look at the top, there is minimal to null deflection at the top and at the bottom we have a maximum deflection. So I'll close the uniform pressure load for a second, stop the animation of the hydrostatic one. We'll copy this window and look at the stresses. I want it deform. It's okay. I don't want it deform. Show element edges. Now we'll go to format, edit, 2 power E6 to maximum would be 1.6 E power 7. Okay. So we can probe anywhere on the model by going to dynamic query. In case if you want to change the background color, if the text is not visible, you could go to format, edit and just click on this bottom one, go to color wheel and select somewhere close to gray. That has a good background with blue. Yeah. So this gives us a good contrast in colors. I hope you would have got a good understanding of hydrostatic pressure load and uniform pressure load. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. I'll look at it and respond to it. Thanks a lot for watching.